All right, Mike, so I know you haven't been to Rod's place before. It's pretty freaking cool. So just be ready. You're going to see stuff you, you won't even believe. Okay, you let's ready? Go. I'm ready. All, All right, right, here we go. Yes, sir. Hopefully, he'll let us in. Yeah, hey, Rod. Good to see you guys. Rod, how you been? Good, good. Welcome back to Emory Motorsports. It's great to have the team from MP here. We're going to go through and take a look at some of the projects that we've got going on in the shop. It was fun to be at Rensport a few months ago and see all the new products that MP had to display. And a lot of that stuff gets implemented and put onto the cars. So take a look at the shop. Hey Ron, thank you again for having us. It's always a treat. We wanted to go to Santa's workshop, but he said we should just go to Emory Motorsport. So here we are. One of the questions we're getting from our audience is, what, what makes an outlaw? Can you give us a, a little overview on what really kind of ticks the boxes? Yeah, I mean, there was the factory original Porsche 356, which is an amazing car, drives great. But you know, today's driver and consumer wants the cars to have, they really want the car to have a little bit more power, mm -hmm. a little more drivability. So sure. what we do in the shop here is take the 356 and just upgrade and enhance, mm -hmm. you know, the brakes and suspension and give it a little bit more power. You know, a car like this, um, you know, it's got, semi-active suspension and big brakes and you know about four times the horsepower that it would have had originally um, and a little speedster like this uh, you know it still looks like it has the old drum brakes but you know they're a four piston disc brake and the engine has about 260 horsepower and uh, you know we set the cars up so we can use a more modern tire and a lighter wheel you know we get to use a lot of your products on the cars um, we like you know that. There, there were certain items that that Porsche uh, you know, built that were amazing parts, mm -hmm. but they've timed out, you know, sure. front spindles and, mm -hmm. um, you know, tie rods. We, we actually use your um, wiper motors mm -hmm. um, since we've converted the cars to 12 volt. Yes. We've taken the latest model of the 356, um, like the C model uh, wiper assembly mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. retrofit that into all oh, of our great. cars, but we're using one of the MP wiper motors okay. on every one of our cars. Um, you know, the cars are also IRS now, mm -hmm. so, uh, we get to use the stub axles and some great. of the, the CVs that oh. you guys have. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's really great to, to have, you know, companies like yours that are, mm -hmm. you know, building parts so that we can keep these old cars on the road, yeah. make them safer and uh, enjoyable for everybody. And beautiful, and beautiful. But going back to the, um, the, the core question about Outlaw, so we've got a silhouette that you're kind of working within that profile. And then from there, you're just doing your art, right? You're whatever the customer wants. Yeah, it, it's not necessarily always what the customer wants. You know, okay. it's a collaboration. Uh -huh. um, you know, I want the cars to look and feel, mm -hmm. um, you know, on brand with yes. the cars that we build. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's always a consultation and then we get together and, and come up with a color combination and, and kind of the overall look of the car to keep mm -hmm. it looking as if Porsche would have built it in their mm -hmm. custom build department back okay. in the day. Um, you know, I don't go crazy on the wheels. I don't go crazy on the paint, I, I want it to really have that period authentic feel and look yeah. um, just really more enhanced and a better driving experience. Mm -hmm. But you know, we'll louver the deck lid, yes. um, you know, to bring more air into the engine compartment. Sometimes uh, we'll raise the wheel arches a little bit to give, you know, a, a little bit more turn angle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are running a wider tire than they yes. originally had. They had okay. like a 165, we're mm -hmm. running a 205. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we take the bumpers and move them in a little bit more yeah. and use the trim like Porsche would have used on their GT cars. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of combinations and lots mm -hmm. of styling things that we can do on the cars to personalize them. Every car we build uh, is different mm -hmm. and, and unique. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Porsche built the 356 from 1950 to 1965, mm -hmm. and then they stopped in 1965 to make room for the 911, 912, sure. 914, and everything mm -hmm. else. But for me, it's like, I see it as my life's work to mm -hmm. carry on and continue the 356. Yeah and to make it more drivable and enjoyable for people. Um, you know, it's something that, that uh, I fell in love with as a kid. Yeah. And I've been doing this 33 years and have built about 240 cars wow. to this level, uh -huh. um, you know, along with my team. Mm -hmm. um, in the early days, it was just me and my wife and, you know, one or two employees. Mm -hmm. Now there's 20 of us here in the workshop wow. and we build about 15 complete cars a year. Mm -hmm. And you were making the comment your backlog is? 
Yeah, you know, so we can only build so many cars. We build about 15 per year, and right now we've got about a three and a half year waiting list, and that's just, it's just part of it, you know. Um, our customers are, you know, clients are, are patient for the mm -hmm. most part, and you know, they understand that when you hand build a car like this, and when you go to the, you know, the detail and, and mm -hmm. level that we're taking these cars, that it's worth waiting for, yes. you know. Sure, everybody would like that instant gratification, but. Sure. You know, they can go buy a, a new Cayman or a new 911 and get that instant gratification sure. and enjoy it for a couple of years mm -hmm. while their 356 is being built. And yeah. we'll even uh, oftentimes match it, oh, really? you know, color-wise oh, wow. to a new 911. Okay. So, you know, what we're, what we're doing is really complementary to what Porsche is doing. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're not competition. We, you know, really work together mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, uh, make a nice uh, combination of cars in somebody's yeah. garage. And the good news is you're not going to be retiring anytime soon, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, this is a, we're really, you know, four generations in the Porsche business. My grandfather worked for Porsche back in the 60s, mm -hmm. and my dad was in the parts department at a Porsche dealership mm -hmm. uh, in the 60s and 70s, and then started Porsche Parts Obsolete. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been doing this since the late 80s, and now my son Zane and my daughter Jade mm -hmm. really run the back end of the business mm -hmm. now. Zane's on the assembly side. Uh -huh. Uh, Jade does uh, all the project management and ordering. So, yeah, this this will continue on, you know, well past uh, my lifetime, yeah. which is really cool for me uh, to be able to, to work every day with my daughter, yeah. my son, my son-in-law, and the rest of my amazing crew here. It's uh, it's pretty special. You're probably one of the few people in the world that has been to, to every one of the Rensport reunions. We just had number seven. What were your thoughts? What, did, what were your findings? Well, you know, Rensport is the ultimate Porsche event. I mean, you know, Porsche North America gets behind it and brings out, you know, everything <laughs> possible. Um, so all of us in the industry, we want to support it as well. And, and I brought as many cars as I could, you know, get into the paddock and, and into displays. So we had uh, ten cars there. Uh, most of them were in the outlaw display, mm -hmm. uh, which was a really cool uh, display in the paddock that Bruce Canapa and, and others organized for us. Um, and then the 356 SL. Mm. Uh, we, Beautiful. I had this car uh, over in Europe. It was at the uh, Porsche Museum earlier in the year, and then uh, at the Le Mans Classic, my wife and I went and uh, got it back on track. But we flew it back here in time for Rensport, uh -huh. um, and so it was in the heritage display, and we got to do some laps at, at Laguna Seca in this. Uh, oh, my wow. daughter and I uh, did a 20-minute session at full speed, which is you know only about 90 miles an hour in this uh -huh. car, but you know tires squealing uh -huh. uh, around the track, so that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, Rensport was just amazing. I mean, to see that many cars, that many people and um, just so much excitement and enthusiasm. You know, in the vendor area where you guys had that amazing display, um, you know, I could hear that engine you had on the back of the, the truck, you know, revving at 7,000 RPM uh, every time I uh, walked into the vendor area, but I know people love seeing that. You know, they, they, they love to have or see or hear living displays, you yes. know? And uh, so it was cool to see that and all the new PMO stuff that you guys have coming out. Um, and you know, for us, it's it's really just yeah about supporting the mm -hmm. the industry and going there. Um, this car was uh, one of the cars in the Outlaw display. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our customers drove their cars to and from uh, oh, Rensport, awesome. and then there was the 356 reunion uh, in conjunction with that mm -hmm. on Friday. So we rounded all the cars up and drove that over the hill um, and uh, into Carmel Valley and, mm -hmm. and did the 356 reunion. And I think there were. 250 or 300 356 wow. that gathered on Friday afternoon um, during Rensport. So yeah, just, you know, uh, I could talk for days about mm -hmm. all the experiences and people that I got to spend time with uh, at Rensport. Oh, our man Chip, that's right. You were involved in his dune buggy build at SEMA, right? So it was uh, it was pretty fun. A couple of years ago, he reached out to me and said, hey, we're gonna do this Myers-Manx Porsche inspired build. Mm -hmm. uh, gonna work with Empy and Myers-Manx and, he says, I'd love to, you know, get you involved and, and see if we can put some authentic real Porsche parts on it. So he spent a couple days here with me digging in our parts building and, wow. you know, we found different lights and, you know, hood handles and switches and gauges and all that, you know, kind of authentic stuff to, 
to you know just make it that much more special and and it was right down to the wire I mean you know uh, the last week I think he was here three or four times oh, wow. uh, you know looking for just the right special little mm -hmm. pieces or hardware but um, it was great to see that car mm -hmm. um, you know at SEMA and see the reaction and see everybody yeah. love and enjoy it um, I was hoping he was gonna bring it out the following weekend to my dad's uh, uh, 80th birthday party right. out in Ocotilla Wells yes. but um, you know, I, maybe Chip wasn't ready to get it dirty yet, but we'll sure. uh, we'll get him out there. My dad, uh, as you know, built the first Baja Bug in the mm -hmm. in the '60s, and and so uh, the reason he built the Baja Bug was because he couldn't afford a Myers Manx. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a young family, and uh, so he took a. 57 oval window beetle and chopped the nose and tail and built the first Baja Bug so that he could go out to Akatia Wells with all of his buddies. Oh wow. So for his 80th birthday, um, you know, which is approximately 50 years after he built that Baja mm -hmm. Bug, um, I rounded up a lot of his old buddies mm -hmm. uh, that that were involved, you know, back in the day, Jim Chamberlain, who was uh, heavily involved in, in uh, Myers Manx. Mm -hmm. He came with a bunch of buddies and and uh, we, we rounded up as many Myers Manx and, mm -hmm. and Baja Bugs as we could and s celebrated and enjoyed, you know, my dad's 80th birthday at Akatia mm -hmm. Wells, so that was fun. But Chip said he was gonna go. Chip, next time, buddy. Okay. All right, uh, please note, my 80th birthday, I would like to sing. <laughs>